Today we're going to take a look at the GQ Electronics DC lab power supply. Pretty uh, fundamental building block of any uh, decent electronics uh, work is to have a nice DC power supply. This one uh, comes from China and uh, it seems like one of a whole whack of different ones that all seem kind of the same except they changed the faceplate. I'm not sure if they're the same inside, but this one is rated at uh, 5 amps at uh, 30 volts and it has a price tag of actually under $100, which is a smoking good buy if it actually works. Okay, so uh, when you're looking for a DC lab power supply, there's a couple things that are really important. Obviously, you need an adjustable voltage. Um, and also really important is an adjustable current, and I'll explain why that's really important. Uh, just got a simple setup here, got a, a power resistor up to the supply, so we can look at it when it goes into constant current mode. So, uh, nice power button in the front, that's handy. Uh, we've got the course adjust here, so you want to make big adjustments to your voltage, you can uh, adjust it there. And then a fine adjust here, so you can get the precise voltage, that's good, that's really standard and allow power supply, something you really want to look for. Um, on this side here, you can get constant current mode, so I have about a 10 ohm resistor here. What will happen is that if I adjust down the current mode a little bit, the constant voltage light goes off and the constant current light comes on. Now, that's really critical when you're doing lab work, uh, especially prototyping electronics. You often want to keep your current limit uh, way down uh, so you can um, make sure when you do an accidental short, when you're probing around your prototype, you don't uh, you don't get too much energy into the circuit and have destruction. Constant current mode, quite frankly, is actually pretty handy too if you're doing battery-based electronics design and you have a, a budget and you can't exceed it, you know, set, set your current constant current mode to a limit um, and that's just a handy sanity check as you're doing your design work. And you know, quite frankly, if you're into foam cutting for uh, styrofoam cutting with a hot wire, quite frankly, if you're running constant current mode, you actually get pretty darn, darn good results. So, uh, so far it looks pretty good. Uh, this uh, power supply should go up to about 30 volts according to the data sheet here. I'll just take it off constant current mode. Looks like it goes a little bit above that, uh, so right now it's supplying uh, 30 volts uh, at 3 amps. This will actually go up to 5 amps. Uh, the resistor I have is actually a little bit too, uh, too high resistance to get up to the total limit. Okay, so if you're going to evaluate a power supply, you really need to have an oscilloscope because you've got to really see what's coming out of it. And uh, we've obviously got a real simple setup going on here. have a 100 ohm resistor, it's supplying what 7.1 volts, and obviously it's tracing out what looks like a fairly constant uh, output waveform. Uh, the first test uh, that, that I'm going to look at is the fact there's no actual way of turning the power supply on and off otherwise, other than the power button. Uh, a really good quality lab supply is going to have a separate output supply, and uh, let me just show you why that actually is kind of important. I'm just going to turn the supply off here. Okay. And you're going to see actually there's a really quite a glitch here. Um, and the first thing you notice about this uh, GQ power supply is that when you turn the power off just before the power goes away completely it falls out of regulation and it actually produces a pretty nasty voltage spike. Now a real problem if you're trying to uh, debug a circuit that's uh, unprotected because that kind of glitch can actually easily uh, zap your circuit. So um, that's kind of the first knock against this power supply is actually the output enabled doesn't work. Well there is none and when you turn the power supply off it can glitch up badly and um, now, if you're doing RC car power work, powering up uh, charging batteries, doing hot wire work, great power supply, but you know, if you're doing electronics design, you're going to have to hang off the Zen or off this thing here just to keep your uh, circuit from being nuked. So the real metric is to see what kind of power supply noise you get out of supply. Uh, fairly easy to do. Uh, put the scope onto AC couplings. You want to zoom in into the waveform. You're looking at uh, AC uh, phenomena here. Um, you can see there's lights going by a little bit hard to see, so what you have to do is put the uh, infinite persistence on to get a, just a sense of the envelope and uh, wait, a, wait a few minutes for, this, for it just to simply collect uh, an ensemble and then uh, you put your cursors on and measure it. And uh, we're seeing about 70-80 um, millivolts of noise, which actually is not too bad. Okay, now that we've taken a look at the actual outside of the product, uh, let's uh, take a peek inside see how it's constructed. All right, so what are the parts of any lab power supply? You gotta look for a big power transistor, and here's the, this one for this unit. You got a tr transformer here. It's got lots of taps on it, and what happens is that when you go to different voltage ranges, they have some relays click, and they're basically put in different windings. And that's basically to try to limit the amount of power that you have to dissipate off this poor little power transistor. So the fan here, cooling the power transistor straight. Uh, now thermally, this isn't perhaps the most awesome arrangement, but yeah, that's adequate. You got your AC entry, you got your uh, main controller board here, a couple of meters here for the voltage and current, and this, uh, another little control board hanging off here. So 
basic construction, all the major components are kind of where you expect in the supply and they're all looking uh, credible. So in terms of build quality, it's a single-sided circuit board on the uh, display and a single-sided circuit board on the control here. You can see the soldering uh, quality is, is uh, fairly marginal. They've got lots of voids when they soldered it. Um, looks like they've um, tried to put an extra bit of uh, solder onto the uh, copper pads rather than buying the right copper weight board. A little trick here to, uh, to run some solder on the trays to, uh, to increase its current carrying capabilities. In terms of mechanical, you know, quality, I mean, obviously the, the boards here aren't, uh, you know, incredibly rigidly um, tied onto the chassis, but you know, quite frankly, it survives shipping from China. Um, it's, um, it's got some good things. I mean, they've uh, glued the connectors together so they don't uh, separate during shipping. I mean, that's actually a nice little touch. Um, the sheet metal is uh, just basically adequate. Okay, well, let's get some sense as to whether or not this fan, the arrangement they got going here, uh, can cool or not, or how it works. We got um, some smoke here coming from a uh, HVAC smoke gun. You can see it's actually a, a pressurized this strategy. They're uh, they're sucking air in from the outside and then pu pushing against the plate. Um, that's fine. Uh, the real concern here is basically that uh, the air then has sort of blows on the transistor, which isn't such a bad thing. But they didn't really provide a lot of air channels to sort of efficiently move that air around the plate. So it's a fairly primitive way of cooling. Okay, well, let's summarize. Uh, I didn't show it, but I ran the supply all the way up to its rated 5 amps of current and uh, let it go for a while, and it was fine. Uh, so the supply is definitely meeting its specs, which is good news indeed. In terms of value, well, not bad at all. Uh, quite frankly, if you want to get a supply that has an output enable button, uh, maybe slightly better build quality internally, uh, you're looking at about uh, three to 500 bucks. So um, quite frankly, if that's not in reach, it's far better to have a power supply than not one at all. Uh, with this one, really, the only thing you have to really, really be careful about is the output turning on and off. Uh, you might want to invest in a couple of banana jacks or maybe a little external power switch um, if you're doing some electronics design just to make sure uh, your power supply doesn't take out your design. Uh, otherwise, uh, another interesting product you can buy on eBay or through a number of importers in America.